Well hello there YouTube, this is N7TFP and this is a video on how to use an amateur radio antenna tuner. We have an antenna tuner here in front of us. This is a Palstar antenna tuner. You can find more information about it on the website of that company. And uh, I also have a video reviewing this piece of equipment on my channel. Feel free to check either of those out. Um, however, this video will not be about this piece of equipment in particular, but most other pieces of equipment like it, uh, which we use an amateur radio to use antennas which are not resonant on a particular frequency and uh, use them on that frequency. So it's a, uh, it's a matching device for matching impedances of um, non-resonant antennas to a 50 ohm transmitter or uh, some other uh, some other transmitters have other impedances, but the most common one we use in amateur radio is a 50 ohm impedance. And uh, we're going to use this device to reduce the standing wave ratio on a transmission line to uh, approximately 1 to 1 so that there is uh, minimum reflected power into the amateur radio transmitter. So this device is going to allow us to reduce that SWR and uh, have a good match to our transmitter. So we're going to show you what it looks like when we have an antenna that's not properly tuned and we're going to show you how to tune that antenna using the two capacitors and a roller inductor here. And then we'll finally show you what it looks like when we have an antenna that's properly tuned. So uh, this is how to tune an amateur radio antenna tuner. Okay, so one of the first things that we do with this, uh, this piece of equipment is we select what we would like in terms of the, uh, this, this switch over here. This switch allows us to select between a direct connection to the two coax inputs for two separate antennas or a tuned uh, s selection here. These tuned inputs take advantage of the tuning capabilities of this piece of equipment. The direct bypasses these, uh, these uh, uh, capabilities of the tuner. So we're going to go ahead and select the tune mode which allows us to tune the antenna um, and uh, we are going to use coax 1 which is an 80 or uh, 80 40 meter dipole and uh, my transmitter is actually operating on 20 meters right now and we're just on very low power on a clear frequency so uh, we're going to go ahead and first just uh, set the uh, tuner up and again this method uh, can be modified to suit uh, however you'd like to do it but the way I start with an antenna tuner is I put both of my capacitors, these are the capacitors here, they're variable capacitors. I like to set them both at one half or 50%. Next thing I do is I turn off this relay. Some of these tuners have a relay that add extra inductance for 160 meter antennas, however we're not going to need that today. Um, so I have my capacitors at 50%. I have my power on my transmitter turned way down all the way to the bottom. Um, this is important because you do not want to transmit with a lot of power if your antenna is not tuned properly. So my power is set to 5 watts, which is as low as it will go. And I'm in the, the CW or Morse code mode here, and I'm going to activate the transmitter. Now you'll notice reflected power is shown here on the right. We have about 5 or 4 watts reflected and about 5 watts transmitted. So right now the SWR is very bad. Uh, we're getting a lot of reflected power. We want to reduce that reflected power to bring our SWR down to one to one. Now the way you read these meters is you look where these needles cross. Uh, this is a, a, an example of a two needle SWR meter. Some have uh, different methods of displaying the SWR, but this is a very common one. So to read the current SWR you would look where these needles cross. And approximately right now we're looking at about a five or maybe six to one SWR, which is not good. We want to have our SWR most of the time less than about two and a half, two to one. That's a pretty okay number. Uh, ideally, one to one is, is a perfect match. So we'll try and get our, our uh, SWR down as low as we can here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here now that we have our transmitter activated is we're going to adjust this roller inductor to try and minimize the SWR without doing anything with the capacitors first. This is kind of the rough adjustments that we use to find, uh, as you can see there, it's already beginning to go down, to find a resonant point. Now you'll notice that there was a kind of a dip there as I turned the inductor past about 150 or so. Let's see, where is it? That's about the low point right there. So that's a good place to start. We'll start with the inductor. What is it? It's about 137. And that's not a unit of any kind. It's just an arbitrary unitless dimensionless number that we use. Uh, to indicate what position this was at. Um, so now that we have the inductor set at a point where we have a somewhat lower SWR, 
we're going to go ahead and use our capacitors to continue the process and try and reduce the SWR even more. Now, usually, when you're tuning a, a tuner, it's best to do both of these at the same time. It's a little bit of a, co a confusing thing to, to kind of master at first. Once you've practiced a little bit, you'll get better at it. Um, with this device here, uh, usually you turn the capacitors in the opposite directions to reduce SWR. And I'll do these in small increments so you can see what I'm doing. We're starting with each of these at 50%. And uh, I'll move this one a little bit this way and see that increased it. So uh, I'll stop and go back to 50, try and reduce it. Oh, there we go. We have lower SWR. You notice the reflected power is going down. And we get to a point where it dips. There's a dip. And if you notice, I decreased this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the capacitance of the other one. And I did it ever so slightly. And there was a slight reduction in reflected power. It's very, very small because our reflected power is almost down to zero, which is ideal. Um, we'll do it a few more times here, just small movements. And as you can see, if I go too far, reflective power comes up. So we'll, again, just kind of shimmy our way through here, very small adjustments, very fine tuning, until we get to a point where it looks like it's about zero reflected power. Now, uh, let me turn the transmitter off here. There we go. We are at, at a point where it looks like our reflected power is at a minimum. What I'm going to do now is increase the transmitter power. Now, as I increase the transmitter power, take a close look at the two needles, the forward and reflected power. Here we are increasing the transmitter power, and you'll notice that the reflected power rose slightly. Now, the reason that did, it did that is because uh, when the power was at 5 watts on the transmitter, there was such a small amount of reflected power coming back down the transmission line that we weren't able to actually read it with, these, uh, with this instrument here. As we increased our transmitter power up to a maximum of 100 watts, which is what this transmitter is capable of, that power, um, the reflected power, became high enough that we were actually able to display it on the needle. So we're going to use that uh, higher power to do a last fine tuning. This isn't really necessary. It's uh, some would call it overkill because the SWR is down pretty low. Um, however, uh, we're just for the sake of education and uh, good measure, we're going to tune the uh, antenna to as good of a match as we can. Okay, so like I said, we've uh, increased the transmitter power here up to a higher level, uh, and you'll be able to see that reflected power increase a little bit now that the overall power is higher. You'll notice that it goes up to about uh, about three watts or so, and so we'll do one more tuning here with these capacitors to see if we can't just reduce that a little bit more. Up oh, there we go. It looks like we found a very good resonant point. Um, the forward power, as you can see, is about 100 watts, and the reflected power is zero. Notice where the needles cross is approximately one-to-one -one SWR. Those red lines uh, indicate the actual SWR, the standing wave ratio. That is the ratio between the reflected waves and the forward traveling waves on the transmission line. One thing that I think is really important to remember is that while an antenna tuner is useful, an antenna tuner generally will not increase performance. Um, standing wave ratios usually occur when you have, like I mentioned earlier, an antenna that you're using that's not designed for the frequency that you're using it on. Antenna tuners simply act as mediaries, or they kind of stand between your radio and your antenna to match the impedance of your antenna to your radio. Having an antenna that is not uh, at 50 ohms or is not resonant is not a good place to start. You're always going to have better performance when you're using an antenna that's designed specifically for the frequency which you wish to use it on. Um, however, these antenna tuners can be useful for us amateur radio operators because we have such a very uh, range of frequencies that we operate on. So an antenna tuner is useful, but it's important that we don't rely entirely on the antenna tuner all the time because that will not yield as good a performance as having an antenna that's properly designed. 
and is, is resonant on the frequency which we would like to use it for. So, when designing an antenna, it's important to consider several things. One, the frequency which you would like to primarily use it for, and two, um, how many other frequencies are going to use it for. Without going into a complicated discussion on antenna theory and electromagnetics, um, generally what we hams do is we design our antennas to be used on the frequency which we're most likely to use it for. And another most important, really important thing to take into account is the lowest frequency that we intend to use it on. So, um, when designing an antenna, most people say that longer is better, and in most cases that is true. Um, however, for amateur radio operators that don't wish to uh, operate on uh, the higher amateur radio bands like 10 and 15 meters, it's going to be more beneficial to design your antenna to, to resonate on the lowest frequency that you would like. In my situation, I operate quite a bit on 80 meters in the evenings, so my antenna that I have is an 80 meter dipole. Uh, you're generally going to have better performance if you have an antenna that is too long and you're using an antenna tuner to make it electronically shorter than if you did it the other way around, where you would have an antenna that's too short and you're using an antenna tuner to make it seem electronically longer. Um, that is not generally a good thing to do. It's not necessarily dangerous, but you just have very reduced performance. Uh, you have a lot of reflected power. Uh, the, the antenna tuner does not eliminate the reflected power between the antenna and the tuner. It eliminates that reflected power between the tuner and the transmitter. So the standing wave ratio on the transmission line is still present. And it's very important to remember that because that's what reduces performance. The antenna tuner simply uh, eliminate, eliminates the standing wave ratio between the tuner and the transmitter alone. It does not necessarily affect the standing wave ratio present on the transmission line. One thing I'd like to say before we conclude this video is it's important not to tune your antennas to sit there with your transmitter activated on top of other ongoing conversations. Good amateur practice tells us that when we would like to tune our antennas we find a clear frequency. This is not law, but it's, uh, some may argue that it would be considered interfering with another conversation. So out of the respect for other amateur radio operators, I urge you to find a clear frequency when tuning your antenna. That about wraps up this video on how to use an antenna tuner. If you have a question that remains unanswered, feel free to send me an email or a message on YouTube, or just leave a comment below and perhaps someone else will get to it before I can. Thanks for watching. Don't be, uh, forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, hit that like button down there. This is N7TFP73s, and we'll see you next time.